So this morning, I was on a walk and I found a orchard oriole nest. And uh, I'm here with my camera, hopefully I can get a shot of it and share it with you. No promises though. Um, but while I'm waiting for, uh, so I've got the nest actually right in view right now, um, and I'm waiting for the bird to come back. Uh, and while I'm waiting, I hear a house wren over to my right. And a little while ago, there was a cat bird right in front of me on my left. And uh, there's a cardinal in there too, and some other birds that I can hear. But it brings to mind some questions about what drives all of this behavior. Uh, it is um, early June, and the birds somehow, you know, know uh, that it's time for reproduction. Um, got the, the nest being built, uh, got the eggs being laid, uh, the, the male birds are singing. And uh, the answer is, uh, well, um, of course, well, there's two answers. One is uh, the birds are just going to be nesting when it's the best time of year for when food is available for the chicks. That's driven by evolution. And uh, they have physiological uh, processes that help them uh, with that timing. And the physiological processes uh, will include hormones, specifically reproductive hormones such as testosterone or estradiol. Now, testosterone and estradiol in humans, um, you know, will go up and down uh, a little bit during the, uh, the year, um, but uh, we, uh, we are generally uh, making those hormones year-round. Um, and in fact, you know, you know people with birthdays that are year-round. Um, there's uh, human babies that are born in December and spring and and July and, and all the months in between. But birds, you know, uh, there's a few species, particularly tropical species, uh, that can breed year-round. Um, but up here in the temperate zones, the reproduction has to be timed just right. Hormones help the bird prepare for that reproductive timing. Okay, the orchard oriole just gave a song to the left. Does that mean it's going to go to the nest soon? I hope so. Well, I did get a shot of the Orchard Oriole. Uh, hopefully it's pretty good, um, but I just decided that I was probably too close to the nest. Uh, the bird didn't want to go in to the actual nest while I was there, uh, particularly talking to you. Uh, no offense, but ah, you're too noisy. Just kidding. Um, well, I was talking about how uh, testosterone in human beings is, is pretty much a little fluctuation now and then during the year, but birds, on the other hand, uh, go through great fluctuations in reproductive hormones. It turns out that during the non-breeding parts of the year, that is late summer, fall, all of winter, early spring, uh, that reproductive hormones are, are quite low. And then they uh, basically explode uh, during the spring to facilitate um, the setting up of territories, and bird song, uh, the finding of, uh, you know, a mate, uh, the actual mating, the copulation, 
Uh, and then um, different hormones are involved in parental care, such as incubation and feeding of the young. Once those things are accomplished, then again, the hormones go way down. Um, a lot of birds, uh, the testes and ovaries that are producing these reproduct reproductive hormones, they uh, shrink uh, to almost nothing. Ultimately, this is an energy saving strategy. Uh, it is inappropriate for birds to be mating and having young in the winter time when there's no food to feed them. So uh, you, the, the birds just basically shut those systems down and they don't have to maintain them, don't have to put energy into them. So how do these birds, their bodies, know when it is time, when it's appropriate for mating and when reproductive hormones should increase? It all has to do with, let's see, where is the sun? There's the sun. Um, more specifically, the length of the day. Uh, and it's the same principle um, for how plants and trees know when it is appropriate to leaf out and to flower. The days begin to, you know, the shortest day is in mid-February, mid to late what am I talking about? As you know, the shortest day of the year is the start of winter uh, in December. From that point on, the days lengthen just by a minute or two each day uh, until you get to um, until you get to summer. Uh, about now, um, when the days have uh, gotten really long and the day length is going to be the longest in late June. Now, the birds don't have wristwatches and they're not timing the length of the day, uh, not consciously, uh, but they do have eyes and the retinas are transmitting information to the bird's brain about how many hours of daylight there are. Uh, and the brain is sensitive, very sensitive, to the number of hours and minutes uh, of sunlight. Um, now it's not, you know, timed specifically for each day uh, because we do have cloudy days with lots of precipitation in the winter time and so that can screw things up, but uh, it's kind of the average amount of daylight uh, per day during, uh, during the winter and it's compared with during the spring. Um, birds can be sensitive to change in day length uh, by as much or as, by as little as 10 minutes. So um, they are aware that mid-December, when it is the shortest day of the year, they're aware that that's different than late December or early January, when the day is ever so slightly longer. What these changes in day length do is, again, the information is received by the brain, and the brain then uh, signals the gonads, the testes and ovaries, to start producing testosterone and estrogen. And those hormones will slowly ramp up as appropriate. Uh, it's not just day length, um, but also uh, air temperature and food supply uh, and social environment. So it's um, inappropriate, even if the day length is, is kind of right for reproducing. Um, if the air temperature is too cold, uh, then the, the, the brain sort of shuts down testosterone production and estrogen production um, because uh, if it's too cold, there's not going to be enough food time. And if there's not enough food um, to sort of start up the reproductive process, uh, then the brain's going to tell the testes and ovaries to just put, on, put it on hold and don't produce as much reproductive hormone. Likewise, uh, it is not worth it to produce testosterone or estrogen if there's not a conducive social environment to finding a mate. And so um, we know, for instance, um, that uh, some birds will become more stimulated when they are interacting with birds of the same species. So if you're all alone, uh, there's no point in being reproductive because, well, mm, sorry. Human reproduction is, is similar, 
Um, I don't think we're all that uh, sensitive to food supply, um, but the social situation um, can lead to a, in this, in humans' case, a, diminish, a diminishing of the reproductive hormones. Um, it's well known that during stressful periods, such as war or social unrest, uh, that women's menstrual cycles are interrupted, um, and the uh, the women's bodies are, are just putting more energy into coping with that stress than in reproduction. And birds will do the same thing. If there's a major winter storm uh, or social unrest amongst the flock, um, I'm not really sure what that would entail, but, uh, but I imagine um, that if there's a dominance interaction, um, the birds sort of have to figure that part out first, and then they can get busy reproducing. I almost forgot to talk about the reverse. Um, when the breeding season is coming to an end, how do the birds sort of know that and shut off the production of reproductive hormones? That switch is called the photorefractory switch, and you don't need to know that, that term. But uh, at some point, and it varies from species to species, uh, the birds become insensitive to daylight, and they just turn off uh, the secretion of testosterone and estrogen. And at that point, then the gonads shrink down to nearly nothing, uh, and they are no longer interested in mating, uh, building nests or anything like that, or defending territory either. Now, as I said, that varies, that, that uh, sort of initiation of photorefractoriness, uh, that differs from species to species. And the reason it differs is because some species have shorter um, reproductive cycles than others, and so uh, some species can fit in more than one nest cycle uh, per spring and summer. Um, whereas other species only uh, breed one time per year. In any event, at some point it's late in the season and the birds have to start getting ready. The adult birds have to start getting ready for uh, migration or preparing for the winter time. Uh, and the young birds of the year, well, they have to be mature enough that they can survive on their own. And so it's no longer uh, appropriate again uh, for them to start reproducing. Because let's say you have a nest in September, that's not going to be enough time for the young birds to become independent uh, prior to the winter.